Hello everyone, Steve here. I'm showing off my latest 3D printed clock and I designed this clock to be super easy to build and I did that by consolidating the components to as few of parts as possible. This clock uses one ball bearing size. There's actually five ball bearings, two of them to support the pendulum, two of them to support the weight shell, and then another bearing in the pulley of the weight shell. Um, it uses one size of screw, um, used everywhere in the clock, the same size, you know, fewer trips to the hardware store. There are two sizes of steel rod, three millimeter and one sixteenth inch or one and a half millimeter. And that's about it for the components other than BBs for the weight shell. I mean, obviously there needs to be some kind of weight. And then it needs some fishing line to support the weight shell as well. Plus a couple of springs from a click pen. Those are used for the ratchet and then there's another spring in the friction clutch used to set the time. Uh, you can rotate, you know, change the the time and uh, it's a pretty stable mechanism. One of the things I noticed as I was building the clock, uh, the first prototype, I thought oh, I'll just make it a, a clock that's as stable and easy to build as possible. I'll go for a seven and a half or eight day run time. That clock was running with barely two pounds of weight. Um, it was very stable with two and a half pounds. So didn't take long to realize that, oh, I could run this thing on 11 pounds, five kilograms. That clock will run for 32 days. Uh, I think that's pretty darn amazing to get a clock that'll run for a month on a single winding. A couple of other features on this clock is tapered pins to hold the, the pendulum in place. Really easy to take the, the pendulum off. And at the bottom of the pendulum, there's a threaded shaft and some printed nuts that can be rotated. Uh, there's two nuts, so, two nuts so they can lock in place. And that, that sets the, the depth of the pendulum bob to change the rate of the clock. Changing the runtime is as easy as reprinting two of the gears. Uh, this is the, the minute hand arbor and the, the ratchet. And by changing the, you know, the number of teeth on this gear and the number of teeth on the ratchet changes how much energy is provided from the ratchet to the minute hand arbor. And changing that ratio will change the, the runtime of the clock. This is the gear ratio for the seven and a half day mode and a very large minute hand arbor and a much smaller ratchet. So therefore, the you know, minute hand arbor obviously rotates once per hour. The, this gear ratio is probably one and a half to one. So the ratchet will ro rotate in about one and a half hours. In 32 day mode, it's a 56 gear, 56 tooth gear driving a 10 tooth gear. So the ratchet, which is much larger, rotates every 5.6 hours. Um, obviously provides less energy that way. So it might need a little bit more drive weight but you get a significantly longer runtime at the risk of making the clock less stable you know, because there's less energy uh, provided to the pendulum. The amplitude's going to be uh, shallower and the clock will be a little bit sen more sensitive. So don't recommend jumping out into the 32 day mode right away. I would recommend 10 or 15 day mode and then if the clock is running great, then step it up and maybe try 21 or 32 day mode. This clock is available with two different uh, dials, a, uh, what I call a traditional Roman numeral dial or a simpler, just, just plain numbers. Uh, either one is available and different hands 
uh, serpentine hands or spade hands. This clock is also available with a larger dial. The larger, heavier weights and heavier escapement steals a little bit of the energy or rather takes more energy to drive the pendulum. So the runtime is going to be reduced on this clock using a similar drive weight. Uh, probably when it gets released, it'll have run times on the order of 10 or 15 days maximum versus up to 32 days with the, the medium size clock. Setting up the clock is relatively easy. Uh, there are two holes on the back, although technically only the top hole is required. Uh, those are for a mounting a nail or a mounting screw. Uh, if you use both mounting screws, the clock will not tilt side to side, makes it more stable, uh, but then you will have to use the, the tapered uh, groove along the, the pallet arm in order to set the beat. So I'm going to hang this clock just using a single nail. The pendulum just drops into position and the weight shell you know, threads through, you know, the string th threads through the pulley, attach the cord to the, the screw on the side of the lower support column, and then the next step is to check where the clock ticks and because I only used a single screw I can tilt the frame you know left or right and change the beat right right now the beat is way to the right you know, see at vertical it ticks so I'm going to tilt the clock frame a little bit and then the, the clock is running now th this is a this larger clock has a slightly different gear ratio, so the pendulum arm is a little bit longer, you know, plus, plus I've got it mounted lower on the wall, um, but it, it takes a slightly longer pendulum arm, different weights, um, and this clock has you know different run time as well. And the weight balance on these clocks is pretty decent. There's a small weight for the pendulum arm, about six ounces, and six or eight, maybe even 10 or 11 pounds on the weight shell, but that's just to the left of the, the center line of the clock versus six ounces way over on the right. So the two of those are reasonably well balanced but it doesn't hurt when the clock is in its final position to use both you know, screws on the top and the bottom to keep the frame balanced. The weight shell is available in multiple diameters and as a full height, and this one has an extension to add a little bit extra weight. Um, the sizes you know, pick a diameter and then increase the length as needed. If, if you're using BBs, they appear to be about 20% less dense than lead shot. So a weight shell that would only need to be this tall, if it was filled with lead, would work just as well this tall filled with BBs. BBs are a lot easier to find safer you know, and less toxic and this jar of BBs uh, right now on Amazon is I think around nine dollars that's six thousand BBs weighs about four and a half pounds so this largest weight shell took two and a half jars of BBs a smaller weight shell less than two jars so under $20 $25 for the largest clock is all you need uh, to fill the weight shells. Here's a few close-up views of this clock. The 
This clock has been running right now for almost two days and the weight shell has dropped uh, about four inches. And normal mode, it, 32 day mode, it'll drop at a rate of about 1.6 inches per day. Uh, close up of the, the pallet arms and the pendulum support. And over here we see the, the winding um, gear. One of the things that helped make this clock easier to build was the, the winding drum that's on this gear does not come through the front of the clock because it uses a small bearing, the same small bearings that are used to support the pendulum. Uh, there's no easy way to bring this arbor through the front of the clock. So I added what I call gear nine with a, a large um, place for the winding key in the front of the clock. And this would have a lot of friction if it had to support the weight of the weight shell. But because it's off to the side, you can see I can wiggle it back and forth. There is no weight on this gear during normal operation. So there's almost no friction, even though there's a large diameter coming through the front of the clock. So when I wind the clock, I just stick in the winding key and turn the crank. That's the only time there's any force on this gear nine. Anytime the clock is running, that gear is unloaded so there's no additional friction.